Okay, today I'm going to show you uh, how to get your rusty axle out of your rusty hub on a BMW, in this case a 530XI uh, Touring, not that that really makes any difference. Uh, be similar front and back, uh, it's because of the rust that's occurred due to this vehicle being in the frozen north for a few years early on um, did the damage. It's been in the dry southwest since then, but uh, there's a lot of corrosion. The other side was an absolute bear to get off. Uh, so I'm going to try to apply the lessons learned and show you how to go about doing it. Now the first thing that you're going to want to do to uh, see what's going on is if you can manage to get your uh, your center cap popped out, uh, you'll be able to at least have an idea what it is you're dealing with. I haven't had this one off, uh, but you can see, and believe it or not, that's a lot better than the other one. Um, you can see there's a lot of rust in there. Uh, I, it, you can just see <laughs> what, what I'm dealing with here. This is, this is ridiculous. Um, but this is what the other side looked like. Uh, just, just the vaguest hint of where you even get to the, um, proprietary 34 millimeter, uh, hub axle bolt tool that you have to use for this this car. Uh, I had to buy lots of big tools to get it done. Um, so the, the trick is first here, removing the worst part of the rust um, before you uh, even try to take it off. So I'm gonna continue picking at it with, in this case, just a small screwdriver. Um, it will take the wheel off so you can see better. Now, after cleaning it up, and that's a very relative term, uh, a bit, got most of the chunks out. You can see that it's uh, quite a bit of debris came out of there. It's by no means really good, of course. Uh, and the, the good news is that the kit I got comes with new uh, axle nut, so I won't have to save this one. Now, there are indents on this one. Uh, I can't even really tell where they were, but basically they're pinched in. There's a, a thin sleeve on the top of this nut that comes up the entire length of the shaft that gets pinched in in two spots where there are indentations in the axle. Um, and there, I'm sure that's been done. It's just that you can no longer see it, but quite honestly, there's not enough metal left in that little sleeve to stop anything anyway. So uh, at this point, it's just brute force that's required. Okay, but first, uh, I'm going to hit it with a little, uh, little blaster, a little PB blaster that is my f favorite penetrant, much better than WD-40 and the like. Um, I don't know that this is really going to help all that much, but it sure can't help, can't hurt. Uh, so this theoretically will start soaking down the the moving bits and I there you go and make it a little easier to get off I don't know whether that's really gonna matter um, this is the 34 millimeter special tool you can see the it's basically a 12 point socket um, and you will need this special tool to get the to get the um, nut off and the trick here is to find a spot where it feels like it's going to line up and then drive it on so that you can feel it getting some purchase. Okay, and that's of course liberating more junk. So with any luck, that's enough. And the next point to bring up is the brute force thing I mentioned, which in this case, uh, I've got an electric 
impact wrench. I have a regular Matic one I've been using for many years. It had, I think, around 500 foot-pounds of torque. Um, but that was insufficient to do the other side. Uh, basically, all I was doing was annoying the neighbors. Uh, and so I went out, did my research, and I found this one. Uh, yes, it's a Harbor Freight tool, uh, but I'm pretty impressed, to be honest. This is a, uh, it's a Bauer, which means nothing. I'm sure it's a Chinese uh, name they made up. Um, but it supplies 1,050 foot-pounds of removal torque. And really almost better, uh, only 300 pounds of installation torque, which is coincidentally just what this uh, nut takes when you reinstall it. So my plan is to just drive it on with this and uh, with any luck take it off with this as well. Because uh, if it doesn't come off, uh, I'm going to have to grind, drill, cut, hack, chisel it off. And uh, let's hope it doesn't come to that because that's only the first step. And two quick notes about this process. Uh, one, use a very stout extension cord if you have to use an extension cord. This is a 12 gauge, 25 foot. Uh, because the uh, with any electric tool, uh, any voltage loss you get in the cable is gonna mean power loss and we need all the power we can get on this one. Number two, um, I will be wearing safety glasses because this is a violent process and as such, Things can fly around and can get really ugly really quick, and uh, getting your own car work done is not worth your eyesight. So, uh, push this on, hold tight, and... Alright, the, um, since the, the, uh, the hub and the rotor can turn, uh, the thing is there are little slots inside the rotor, so it's really pretty simple just to jam, in this case a screwdriver, uh, in, in there, uh, into the slot and let the, let the caliper mount hold it. There's really not that much torque on it, so no concern about doing any damage to anything there, including the screwdriver. So I'm just going to keep hammering on it. Alright, the next step, uh, it's kind of a two-step dance we're doing here. It's violence and heat. So, with my handy-dandy torch, I'm going to heat up that uh, reluctant nut. And that is the magic elixir that helps this, uh, that will help release this. Now, the theory here is by heating the outside, avoiding the, the axle as much as possible, it's heating up the nut, which should theoretically expand it, while the heavier, denser axle will remain at a lower temperature, so it'll be smaller. And you can see the, the uh, PB blaster burning off as I do this, uh, no big deal. Um, so I'm not gonna try to get this superheated just add some heat to the whole thing and then once again hit it with the uh, hit it with my magic thousand feet of foot torque foot pounds of torque and see if it uh, see if it goes a little better this time Boys and girls is all there is to it. Uh, I'm not going to touch it with my fingers because I don't want you to hear me curse. And there it is. And you can see the, uh, the basically the little bit that was holding it in place uh, is rotted off. So that really wasn't an issue. So now we do have a fairly reasonably good looking interface there. But trust me, down inside those splines, there's an ugly beast 
that's waiting to just make our lives miserable. And uh, we're going to go try to slay that dragon on the next steps. Okay, the first step I'm going to do here, before I do anything, is to add some more, uh, add some more of this PB Blaster to those splines. Uh, because the more we can get down in there, the more likelihood that this stuff will free up. You know, even if we only get a little bit of it, there's that much less that we're fighting. So the trick is to use every tool at our disposal. I'm going to admit to using a uh, my three pound sledge and an 18 millimeter wrench to loosen up the two bolts. Uh, again, this car spent too much time in the north, so it is uh, really, really, nothing comes out easy, sadly. So, uh, once I get them loose, because it, there's no room to swing a um, to swing a breaker bar on the lower bolt, so I had to use just a regular wrench and a hammer. The upper one I could have, but uh, I was in hammer mode, so I just kept going. So, now I'm going to just remove the two mounting bolts and I'm going to have ready at my disposal a bungee cord because you'll need that. Pay attention. Right now the lower bolt is out, upper bolt is just about out, so I just got last couple turns here, hang on to the caliper so it doesn't get away from me. Uh, go ahead and remove the upper bolt, which is finger tight now, and then should be able little sometimes a little side to side just to open up the caliper a little bit is a good idea just to make it a little easier to get off but the okay and there it is hanging safely out of harm's way uh next trick get the rotor off uh there's a uh, it's a five or a six millimeter hex that has to come out uh so let's get that out all right that's a six millimeter hex uh, i'm going to put it in there and just for good measure, give it a little, give it a little tap. Make sure it's seated all the way. Uh, there's rust in there, believe it or not. Uh, and then the trick is just pop it loose. Uh, I'm not bothering to cinch down the rotor because it shouldn't be that hard, which is proving me wrong, of course. But by giving a quick, quick hit. Uh, I'm basically able to remove it without locking the rotor down, just using momentum or inertia, as the case may be. And like everything else in this car, expect there to be rust. Uh, it's serviceable, really. That's not. I'm not going to bother replacing that. That should be fine. And then the uh, rotor either comes off. Or it needs a little little persuasion. So uh, in this case, yes, it's definitely going to need some persuasion. There it goes. And we're off. Now you can kind of see the lay of the land. We've got the uh, got the hub here still connected to the axle, which is the problem. Uh, now. On a non-rusty Arizona car, which has been all my other ones lately, um, it's just a matter of pushing this through, and sometimes it's literally almost not finger tight, but not much more than that. It's uh, really not hard to get off at all. Uh, in this case, I'm sure it's going to be uh, because of the way the other one was. So I'm going to start ramping up. The methodology to get this thing loose. I'm going to start slow. Uh, this is an air chisel hammer. Uh, it's got a, a pointy chisel tip in it, which is exactly what you need. You notice that there's a corresponding little little nub right in the center of the axle. It's there just for this kind of thing. So this thing is like hitting it with a 10-pound sledgehammer hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of times a minute, which can be pretty effective. And we could just get lucky and push it out and call it a day. Um, the other thing I would like to add is that I'm going to go get my hearing protection because this gets loud.
And don't forget the eye protection because stuff will be flying around like crazy. So I'm ear and eye protected and I'm going to just start hammering on it. As expected, nothing happened. Instead, what I'm going to use is this massive three-jaw puller here uh, that supplies 10 tons of force uh, to the axle in place. Uh, didn't need that. So I've got it configured for its shortest reach, which is still too long. Uh, basically, these jaws need to be up here somewhere to really get a grip on letting this push the axle out because the hub is right by the um, the level of the axle this has actually got to be recessed down into it so i have to kind of make do and i'll show you how i did that the first step is to remove the little pointy deal here because uh, we're not going to be able to push directly uh, from here to the to the axle since the axle is going to be way down here whenever we're pushing and i found that an 18 millimeter uh, 18 millimeter impact socket is just the key and that works great okay one of the reasons i don't throw away the old axle nut immediately is because it actually hasn't quite outlived its usefulness yet uh, i'm just going to thread it on just very superficially just enough to uh, uh, allow a resting place for this socket that I'm going to use to push the axle. Uh, it'll just help hold it in place whenever I'm placing the um, the, the uh, three-jaw puller in place. Uh, make it a whole lot easier to center without having to keep this manually uh, held at both ends. So I'm going to do that now. And the thing is heavy. It's awkward. Um, wish me luck. Okay, I've got it about as close as I can get it, just, just eyeballing it in. Uh, there's a lot of fiddling around here. Uh, I've got these arms set so they're fairly stiff, although they like to loosen up because these are just finger tight. Um, so the trick is to get it placed and then make sure that the uh, device is set to on, which means it will hold pressure. Uh, and that you've got it down as close to the right length as you can before you start. Okay, so I'm just pressing it into place here. Alright, that's... And then as I get it closer, I'll fine-tune the legs here. You can see they're starting to walk into place. And make sure everything is centered. Alright, that's pretty good. Okay, now, once once it's snug, and you can do that by just, uh, uh, I'm, I'm, the, the noise you hear is me pressing the um, piston manually. Okay, and once you have it in place, again, put on your eye protection. Uh, look for your handle, which is going to come in kind of handy. Uh, and then you can start applying a serious amount of pressure. And since this thing is supposed to get 10 tons of pressure, I'm going to kind of get out of the way. In case something just cuts loose, I'll just want my squishier bits to be a little further away from the action. Alright. And that's about all she wrote. That's 10 tons of force on the axle. Now, Normally on a car that has not been rusty, uh, just one of your regular cheapo three-jaw pullers will push that right through. Um, perhaps the uh, the other methods I mentioned will also do it. In this case, it's probably just like the other side. It's going to take a uh, it's going to take more violence, more heat, and more time to get it done. So the trick is I've soaked it with the PB Blaster. I'm going to continue doing that. I'll continue to make sure there is full pressure on here. And I'm just going to add some more Blaster. 
just for good measure. I don't know why this stuff never comes out right. All right, um, and just start phase two. I should mention that the axle is still connected to the differential, so I'm not going to get a huge amount of push here. Uh, I'm not really worried about that. Once I get it moving, uh, we're 99% of the way there. Um, so what's going to happen if and when this does break loose, uh, this, this pole is just going to fall off. So you want to be a little bit careful about that because uh, as the tension releases, uh, there's nothing really to hold it on and it just falls off. Which is the best news you're going to hear today if you're doing this job. Uh, now, the next step is heat and imp and vibration, which I'm going to do with the mallet around the hub itself. Um, as I turn it and heat it, try to get it to something close to four to 500 degrees Fahrenheit, um, as, which is about all I can get with a propane torch. So that's going to be what I'm limited to. And here we go, and the trick here is to, you want to heat as much as possible the hub itself and hope the axle stays cooler, because by doing so it will remain smaller, the hub gets larger, theoretically that's going to make it easier to get the two apart. Um, now if you're planning on reusing your, your wheel bearing, I would say that this is last ditch. Um, and you want to be real careful because I suspect the wheel bearing is probably not going to be too good when we're done with it. Uh, I'm not really so sure it's good now. Um, 150,000 mile car, it, I just, I'm replacing it just out of uh, caution. So basically, as I do this, I'm going to be using a uh, digital infrared thermometer just to monitor the temperature of the um, of the inside of the hub near near the uh, splines as I can get it. And we've got it up to 168 already, uh, which is just above Arizona temperature. So basically at this point I'm just going to rotate and continue to rotate. Uh, I'm not going to worry about doing any banging until I get it quite a bit hotter because I know it's not going to do any good. All right, we're getting pretty much up to temperature. It's been several minutes that I've been doing this. Uh, time for the ear and eye protection uh, because again, we're doing violence to metal objects which can retaliate. So you want to be careful about that. Uh, but I'm continuing to heat this up. I'm getting uh, passably close to 400 degrees. I'm reading 360 or so. Okay, this is the part the neighbors like. And yes, indeed, uh, although it didn't pop loose all at once, it is moving. I put a piece of tape on the bore uh, just so I could kind of see tiny bits of uh, relative movement. And uh, sure enough, uh, as I continue to press 
more and more pressure into this beast, uh, more of that piston is becoming exposed. I'll try to get you. Nobody ever said 10 tons was easy. Ah, uh, okay, so it is moving. Uh, I'm thinking my next step is to uh, probably remove the axle. I'm gonna turn the torch off. I'm gonna remove the axle and see if I can uh, get that end loose and just continue to push it through. But now that I got it moving, I'm relatively certain I'll continue to be able to do so even if I let it cool off a little bit. Alrighty then, getting the axle bolts off is a unique and interesting process. Uh, the way, since I've got the wheels off the ground and nothing really to hold the hub with, uh, what I figured out is the easiest thing to do is a lot of extensions coming all the way out here to the outside of the car. And then you're not done with the hammer yet because it makes a great method for uh, keeping the wheel from rotating all you have to do is put in a lug nut uh, rotate the wheel around and there you go uh, that is not going to go anywhere and now I've got something to push against to turn off the uh, to re remove the six or is it eight bolts in the axle which I know from doing the other one are really difficult to get out again corrosion so I'm gonna work on that without boring you with the details but trust me I'll get them all all of them out and as weird as this process looks you can actually get the socket on the bolt uh, from out here just by wiggling it into place and then turning it I'm have found I have to use a breaker bar to get enough torque on it uh, which is like everything else on this car. Uh, but then just turn it out and then rotate the axle around to bring up the next two bolts. Uh, use a different placement for the lug bolt. Rinse and repeat until they're all done. Okay, that was pretty much a pain in the butt. It always is. Uh, but it's uh, finally out of there. I, I got all six of the bolts loose uh very difficult process because of corrosion and placement and um just continue to rotate the axle around and and block it and then turn turn the bolt out they're long threads so don't stop before you get it out or you'll have to replace the uh socket which is difficult because the uh because the the rubber here is so tight that it just makes it really difficult to get this you can see I had a little battle damage in the process, but now the axle is able to move back and forth, uh, so I'll be able to push it the rest of the way out without uh, it just running out of out of play to let me get it out of the uh, out of the hub. And I'm going to try to save some time and just go straight to the chase and try to use my uh, pneumatic drill to drive the axle the rest of the way out. Now that's free on the other end, so wish me luck. joy. It's, I believe it might have moved, but not as much as it needs to. So I'm going to hook the uh, the press back up and continue working it that way. I uh, may need to torch it again to get it, get the uh, movement going, but if that's what it takes, that's what it takes. All right then, here we are back to our uh, standard position that we were at before I removed the axle. You can see I've put a piece of blue tape right where the uh, piston comes out of the, uh, the press. So I will be able to see if I'm getting any movement. Uh, with any luck, we'll just this will be enough to just press it the rest of the way out. Now that I've got it moving, at least that's the theory. All right. And it did move. 
it actually did push it maybe an eighth of an inch. Uh, I don't know if it's a, I'm gonna take some time to get it further, but it's moving just a little bit at a time. Uh, but at this point, with this car, any movement is good movement. And I'm just gonna keep on cranking on it getting a little bit more and a little bit more oh, I felt some going and yeah now it's clearly uh, you can see that we're getting some uh, actual movement of the axle it's only going to go so far because I do have that uh the nut is on there, but I'm not really worried about that stopping me. Alright, and with this amount of pressure on it, I'm going to try a few more love taps if that along. No, not really. Alright, so just continue cranking. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and give it some more heat since that is the one missing ingredient here. Uh, and that ought to be enough to really get it moving. Probably won't have to get it near as hot as I did last time. All right, the torch is in place. Uh, it's heating up. I'm just gonna keep working on the pressure and the heat. And sooner or later, good things will happen. Okay, my next trick is that I've placed a larger socket over the 13 millimeter that's doing the pushing on the axle. Um, the theory being, I'm going to put all the pressure I can on the piston as normal, but this gives me something to push against with my uh, air hammer, and that might be just enough to do the trick. I don't know. Uh, I'm just know I got to be close to getting this thing out because it did move a little bit, so. Uh, I'm going to continue heating it and uh, we'll try pumping up the press to full power and then uh, hit it with the air hammer and see what happens. Okay, that's as much as I can do there. 
Uh, one more thing, I'm gonna put a mark. Instead of using tape, I'm just gonna mark the piston uh, where it goes in. Just to, the tape was actually gonna be a problem. So I'll be able to see if I got movement now. That's kind of what I expected. I'm gonna to have to get the chisel tip out because it'll have better ability to stay on the smooth, slick surface. And my air compressor is out of air, so I unplugged it to plug in my other tools. Okay, my torch is on the outs, so I'm just gonna start, got about as hot as I can get it, and start hammering. Okay, you can see, hopefully, that the line, you can see the space between the, the line and the body. That's not much, but movement is movement. So I'm gonna continue heating now and try to get some, try to get some more. Okay, uh, well, that means one of two things. Either something just gave way in my tools, or, and this is a preferable, 
this thing is loose. I think that's probably it. It looks like it's probably further down. Uh, I'm not going to do the YouTube sensation going viral video and reach in and take it off with my fingers and hear the sizzling flesh. But I am looking for my axle nut, which is right here. Okay, that's out. And that sucker is hot, so push it out of the way. And yeah, you can see the axle is now way back in there. So And basically, that's why you try to buy cars from Arizona, not Minnesota.